The death penalty is a very touchy subject, and in order to get more insight on it, I spoke to Robert Dunham, who is the executive director of the Death Penalty Information Center. He basically told me some of the trends in terms of public opinion on the death penalty, and the certain types of people that you might see on death row. Now, once again, I lost the video feed on this particular episode, um, but I still have the audio, so um, it's still a good conversation, just like the last episode, and I hope you enjoy it. I spent my life pushing myself to be the strongest, and now I learn there's a power level I'll never reach on my own. And I hate that. So, what is the Death Penalty Information Center? Um, what does it do? The Death Penalty Information Center is a national nonprofit organization uh, that serves the media and the public uh, with information and analysis about the death penalty. We don't take a formal position for or against the death penalty, uh, but we analyze the policy. Uh, and point out uh, what's going on uh, in, the, in the death penalty across the country. Is there a trend uh, in terms of public opinion on the death penalty, uh, people more for it or against it, and why is that the case? Yeah, there, there's a national trend away from the death penalty, and that trend has been going on uh, for close to 20 years. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are a lot of things that go into it. Uh, first, let me tell you about the trend itself. Uh, in 2015, we had the fewest executions, the fewest new death sentences, uh, and the fewest number of states carrying out executions in a generation. Uh, all of that happening at the same time. Uh, and there are a bunch of things that, uh, that have gone into that. I think primarily, uh, one of the major considerations have been questions of innocence. Uh, we now know uh, that innocent people are being sent to death row. And we have pretty strong evidence that innocent people have been executed. Last year, in 2015, six people were exonerated from death row. And that brings the total of people who've been wrongly convicted and sent to death row uh, since 1973. Uh, it, it's, it's now 156 uh, death row exonerations uh, since 1973. Uh, in the last two years, of the 13 people who've been exonerated, uh, there's been evidence of serious prosecutorial or police misconduct in 12, 12 of those cases. And, you know, people are always worried uh, about uh, wrongly convicting somebody who's innocent. Uh, and they think that, well, maybe we can fix the evidentiary rules uh, and use better evidence. Maybe the state of science will get better so we won't have to worry about junk science testimony, bad arson testimony, bad hair comparison testimony, uh, erroneous DNA, and things like that. Uh, but while you can improve the quality of evidence uh, and you can improve evidentiary rules, uh, we haven't quite figured out uh, how to deal with the question of human nature. And as long as there is uh, prosecutorial misconduct uh, and police misconduct, we can never have assurances uh, that innocent people aren't going to be convicted and sentenced to death. And I think people are really worried about that. Is the death penalty uh, in any circumstance a humane way to punish somebody? Um, well, the Death Penalty Information Center doesn't take a position on uh, on that issue. Okay. Uh, but, um, but what I can tell you is that uh, with United States public opinion is very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, folks were asked uh, by uh, YouGov um, what their opinions wa were uh, about methods of execution. Uh, and two-thirds of Americans thought that lethal injection was not cruel and unusual punishment, but they thought that every other method of execution was. Uh, so we know that that people in the United States are deeply troubled about ways in which the states go about executing people. Um, now that begs the ultimate question uh, about whether the death penalty is ever uh, justifiable and ever humane. And um, I think that there's growing opposition in the United States uh, to the death penalty, some of it on moral grounds uh, and some of it on practical grounds. Uh, but as Pope Francis uh, very recently said, there's no such thing as a humane execution. Mm -hmm. And we've seen botched executions uh, in the last couple of years uh, with essentially experimental drugs, uh, drugs that were never, uh, there were never any um, uh, medical uh, tests done uh, to determine whether they could be uh, administered in a, uh, in a swift and painless way, and it's unethical to do that. Uh, and as a result of that, uh, we had three very seriously botched executions. Uh, in one case, Joseph Wood took two hours to die. 
in, in Arizona. Uh, we had Clayton Lockett uh, taking 45 minutes to die uh, in Oklahoma, uh, and we had uh, an execution of Dennis McGuire uh, in Ohio that took 26 minutes, uh, all, uh, all of them uh, considered botched executions. And then you had the case of Oklahoma uh, being supplied the wrong drugs uh, and uh, executing um, Charles Warner uh, in violation of its own law and almost executing Richard Glossop in violation of its law. So people have, uh, have lost a lot of confidence in the ability of states to carry this out uh, in, uh, uh, in, in a humane way. Uh, and I think that that uh, has uh, joined with the questions of, uh, of innocence, of race discrimination in the application of the death penalty and economic discrimination uh, and has led to a uh, significant loss of support for the death penalty across the United States. So are there any correlations between um, race and people being put on death row or being executed? Uh, what we've seen in, in virtually every state that's conducted studies uh, is that uh, the most likely combination uh, of, uh, of defendant and victim uh, to produce a death penalty uh, is if you have an African-American defendant and a white victim. Uh, the studies consistently show race of victim discrimination. You know, in the United States, half of all murder victims uh, are African-American. Uh, and yet, uh, when you look at who is actually executed, uh, the vast majority of people who are executed uh, are executed in cases in which the victim is white. Uh, and a lot of studies recently have shown that uh, prosecutors, especially in the South, uh, have not been seeking death uh, when there are uh, black male victims uh, and disproportionately are seeking death when there are white female victims. So we see gender issues, uh, we see race issues. And I think it's a combination uh, both of white preference uh, and discrimination against African Americans. And all the types of discrimination uh, that you see in the criminal justice system in all areas, whether it's a, a traffic stops uh, or violence involving police, uh, anything that involves uh, racial bias, uh, you can expect the same types of problems uh, are going to occur with, uh, with potentially uh, deadly effects in capital cases. Well, that's a lot of information. Um, didn't know all about this coming in, but um, I just want to thank you for your time. And if you had anything else to add, um, go right ahead. Um, sure, and it, it's, it's my pleasure to be with you. Um, I would say that we're looking at a sea change uh, in attitudes in the United States about the death penalty. Uh, a generation ago, you saw politicians um, who would uh, go home to their home states to execute people during the course of presidential campaigns so they would not appear uh, to be soft on crime. Uh, there is a complete change uh, these days. Uh, you have major political candidates for president on both sides uh, admitting that there are serious problems uh, with the death penalty. You see public support uh, dropping. You see fewer and fewer states using the death penalty. And even in the states that use it, fewer and fewer counties. Uh, so it's beginning to look like um, this is a punishment whose time may have come and gone. And when you look at the public opinion polls, uh, they show that support for the death penalty is weakest among America's youngest population, uh, which suggests that the trend away from the death penalty is probably one that's going to continue into the future. Once again, I'd like to thank Robert Dunham for joining me in today's episode. And if you want to learn more about the organization that he's a part of, you can check out www.deathpenaltyinfo.org. Now, if you like this particular episode, you can also check out my most recent episode on feminism. What is fem? It's the, it's the belief that women and men have equal status, equal rights. There's, there shouldn't be any discrimination based on gender. And why is it necessary? And if you like this particular episode or any episodes of my channel, go ahead and subscribe. Button's right there. Please press it. Right about now would be good. Or now. Or now. <laughs>